and I'm um, going live and we're live. Hi, welcome to the Stuck in It Zombies. I'm Amy, also known as Jay Nipma. And I'm Megan, also known as Just Run It. And this is episode 370. Cool. We are firmly in July. Yes. Oh my gosh. Don't even like, it's still June in my mind, you know, just late June. <laughs> yeah. And it's already halfway done. Without giving it away to hackers, if they're trying to hack into our um, ZKN events, some of mine are like midsummer. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Where's the, where's the time going? Where's the time going? In where's the time going um, news, Ellie's birthday on Saturday, yesterday passes the test. She just gets in the car and drives off now. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah like I still wow. I'm still like what you just you're driving to the mall by yourself what <laughs> oh wow so, that would yeah. be quite the change it is it, it was I I video I took my camera and I took a video of her driving away the first time because my mom talks about that like oh I can still so vividly remember it and I'm like well now I'll be able to vividly remember <laughs> <laughs> because I have a, a video of it. Um, but yeah, she was a little, she had a little anxiety about the parking because mm -hmm. the way that she got all of her minutes and miles and whatever was that she drove to school and it was very um, valet, right? Like she just pulled up to the curb and I'd drive off with the car, right? So she didn't really have to do a lot of the parking. So she didn't have a lot of practice there. But in the last couple of weeks, we've been doing a lot of um, pulling the van out into the street and putting the trash can as the back and doing parallel parking. And so, yeah, I've got a driver. If it doesn't break people's brain that that little, that little girl that was at ZK and other fiber events with me is now driving. I, <laughs> I don't know what will. <laughs> right. Yeah. My, my teen is not yet driving still, um, have not practiced at all this summer yet. No interest. Yeah, it's kind of a I've, Rorschach test of people, right? I mean, like it yeah. seems like the people the she was really driven, right? Like she was driven to drive. She mm -hmm. wants she signed up for the classes. She wanted to do the practice. She got the she went out and signed up for the day at, um, the next available date to take her test, her driving <laughs> test at the DMV, um, which I've heard there's quite a lineup of um, oh. and pent up demand for that of people taking the test. But yeah, she drove it all, right? Nope no pun intended and pun intended <laughs> so no we've we've got um you know like a I've prefaced or asked you know on the regular uh weekly sometimes bi-weekly mm -hmm. you know are you ready to drive do we want to practice I thought of another route we can go blah 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 um mm -hmm. and I get a I'm not motivated to drive <laughs> And I'm like, or yeah. I, I don't know my motivation. Or yeah, they said the same thing about work, right? I'm not motivated to get a job. Yeah, that's the I'm other like, thing. Oh. She's applying for jobs, right? So I'm like helping her with her resume, and like, well, they want to have a phone interview, and I'm like, oh, you're gonna do, you know, like I'm her cheerleader, so um, yeah. you're gonna do great. You're such a great, you know. She talked to people at the registration at ZK, and like, she's an extrovert, right? So I think she'll. Yeah. She'll, she'll be doing fine, but yeah, it's just all of a sudden, right? Jobs, car. <laughs> ah! <laughs> she sounds like she was stressed, and and now I'm stressed. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've passed definitely the baton. like one of those birds that's like I'm gonna get leaving them nest, <laughs> right? <laughs> just like just yeah. every every step that needs to be taken to fly away. <laughs> The really, really funny thing is her pediatrician. So she was born at Mayo Clinic in Rochester. Her pediatrician randomly showed up at the DMV when we were getting the, the testing done. And she was like, what is Dr. A doing here? And I'm like, don't you know, like all of the pediatricians come and like <laughs> speak about like your physical ability. <laughs> No, she just randomly was there, but it was, it was fun. Cause she got to be part of kind of this milestone, right? Mm -hmm. um, she was, you know, the first, the first doctor checkup and now um, uh, getting the, getting the license. So yeah, good times, good times. Um, 
All right, we have a little bit of administrati. Yes. Uh, and then we've got FOs. Uh, I'm going to pause and say hello to everybody that's out on uh, YouTube. I did indeed get the email out, uh, the ZKN email out a little late um, after I was asleep attacked last night on my couch. Um, so hi, Sarah, Claire, Valerie, Mimi, Sandy. Um, thank you for joining us and for finding us live. <laughs> So we did have um, the June self-striping. I know it is almost mid-July here, um, but I went out and picked up Jimmy Bean's Wool was having a birthday slash anniversary, uh, and they had Lollipop Yarn dye up a, um, it's their trademark. So Jimmy Bean's Wool has kind of that, um, has that kind of rainbow. Uh, let's see if, if I've got my, um, if I've got my, uh, set up here correctly. I can share what this looks like. Uh, it's so pretty. Um, just briefly. So that's what it knits up like is the, um, oh. kind of the rainbow, rainbow stripes. Very cool. Yes. Um, and so that's this, this is June's, um, prize. And so I drew three names. Um, from everybody that had entered out in Discord, that's where we're doing the um, the monthly entries for the self striping and uh, order in which you contact me with um, either selecting the lollipop yarn in the trademark colorway, um, a pattern prize, or um, we've got some. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say highly sought after, a very um, limited edition. And nobody else can buy it currently. Self striping logo. Um, items. That's kind of our, our two socks and it says self-striping craft along um, on a bottle or a shirt or um, logo item of your choice. So um, with no further ado, the three winners were Randy, Ingrid, and Jen Gall. So I think ranging from really recent to April to maybe a little earlier in um, even earlier than April in the year. So just through that highly technical scrolling, <laughs> scrolling solution. Yeah. So, yep. Please contact me at your earliest convenience and state your, your preference of those three. And if it's something that needs to be mailed, um, that is your top preference, uh, send me along your most current address. So there's that. Also get your um, musical uh, craft along entries in here by the end of July. So again, very loosely, it can be inspired by album artwork. It can be inspired by a song. It could uh, title a song lyric, um, just anything that musically makes you um, happy. We did watch uh, The Greatest Showman on Friday and that musically made me very happy. Everybody, if they were um, looking at faces instead of just the <laughs> movie, got to see me like belting out the tunes on mute. <laughs> so, but it made me extremely happy. Um, music makes me happy in general. I'm a very musical person. So combining those two loves. Yeah, I mean, that movie is is lovely, but it's also sad to me. It's very mm -hmm. sad to me. I'm so. choosing to, I'm choosing to just sing the songs and um, really enjoy the lyrics and how they, I mean, it's craftfully done, right? Like mm -hmm. how the music really, um, yeah, it mirrors a lot of the messaging. Um, I think we kind of, sometimes after the movie nights, we talk about um, the movies and, you know, there's definitely the, it's a wonderful life moment, right? Where he realizes all along that he's, he's had what he really needs to be happy. Um, and mm -hmm. yeah, th that's kind of the messaging. I understand that the premise and um, some of the history is maybe uh, is is problematic and sad. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. But good music. Yeah, for sure. I, for sure. Um, this is me or whatever that's in my playlist. I like so that. great, so empowering. Goosebumps, chills, depending on what whether or not you're um, listening to it during a time where you really needed it. Um, it took nine years. I was, we were kind of doing some um, squirrel while we were talking about it to get it made. Um, and oh, I think wow. it was really the, um, the music that ended up making it get made. They found the right people to, um, to write the score and do the, um, the lyrics and yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. again, really focused on the, really focused on the music um, for me anyway, which makes sense <laughs> for me. <Yeah. laughs> so 
Yeah. And then um, other than spend- that, I did send out um, that we're doing a survey on ZKN. Uh, just kind of getting some feedback about what things you're participating in, whether or not um, there's a fun little grid where you can say that you think, you know, we should keep doing it at the same pace, if we should do it more, if we should do it less. Um, And then some opportunities to provide feedback on other events that we could try. Um, I'm open to all kinds of um, speakers that you're interested in seeing and hearing, and then just a general comments. Um, really appreciate that. And then that is anonymous. I'm not looking at the results currently because the size would be the, <laughs> the sample size I would be able to tick and tie. Um, but at the end, after you submit the survey, you get a link to another survey. So then the, the results are completely separated and um, it's anonymous. So um, looking forward to that feedback and, uh, and really appreciate people's time. And then there's a prize. So there's a prize drawing. That's the second half. I don't know if I said that, or I just thought it in my head. (laughs) (laughs) No, but now you've said it and there is prize. (laughs) Yes. So thank you to thank you for your time. Right. I mean, it's kind of the same thing as do you, did you ever run into people taking surveys at the mall growing up? Just, mm-hmm. just like 15 minutes of your time and you could be entered to win, you know, this, you know, $500 gift certificate. <laughs> so no, we'll come up with some fun you my information. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The, the, the provide anonymous feedback and then, um, enter for the prize, which it can't be anonymous. So, um, separated right. them. And again, really looking forward to, um, doing exciting more exciting, different, exciting, less exciting things, <laughs> trying yep. to keep up with the pace of, of my life and what people have an appetite for. So, yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, I don't really have any other administrati. Um, I am slowly getting back into things. I probably will want to, at some point, send out a survey for our in-person event, But um, like I said, there's a few things going on, so I'm not quite sure what the questions I want to ask are yet. Um, But as soon as I've gotten that nailed down, um, some uh, kind of post uh, in-person event survey will go out for your feedback. And then, um, yeah, we were going to talk about some FOs. Agreed. Always exciting. I love seeing what you have, have done since we last talked about, I mean, feel like when we were doing all of it, like the whips and enabling and FOs, like I, I had a pretty good idea of what might be coming up as an FO, right? But now I can get like sneak attacked. By <laughs> like we pulled something out from deep whips, right? And finished it between, you know, yeah. the whip episode and this. I'm like, Whew, what did Amy finish? Yeah. So um, for those of you who don't know, uh, July is the Tour de Fleece which is running concurrently with a Tour de France. And um, I'm not following the Tour de France at all. So I know nothing about that. But for Tour We're de watching Fleece, enough of it at my house to um, balance you out. Let's okay. just say that. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, so for me, uh, it's just about trying to get some spinning in uh, each day. I didn't do anything yesterday, but um, my weekends, I'm super productive. So I'm really excited to share with you. I got quite a bit done. So I was working on this particular yarn um, before uh, Tour de Fleece started, but I got everything plied and washed and hung and whacked and all that stuff. So now it's a complete and full skein. So that's really pretty. Um, Again, a lot of these, I'm not going to know any of the information. I was going to say, what weight do you think it is? Like if you had to guess. Oh, that I could probably tell you, um, between sport and DK. Okay. And that really, again, I think, did you say the colorway is literally, or I guess, is it a colorway? Yeah. I don't remember anything about it. Yeah. It looks very starting. I don't know who dyed it. I don't know what colorway they called it, but. Let's just call it story night, starry night. Yeah. Yeah. Starry night, beautiful colors. Um, and I, uh, I Navajo or chain plied it. And then in um, in ZKN, we are VKN. We talk about like chain plying being um, an aerobic workout. (laughs) It can be. Uh, I had to re kind of relearn it. Um, Mm -hmm. I was doing it too short, um, which the people who are saying it's an aerobic workout know that that's, you know, you need to be wider movements. Um, 
but uh, yeah, I completed that one. Very pretty. And then when I was getting, um, trying to prepare my bobbins, there was quite a bit left on one. So I went ahead and I um, took that in and made it a cake and then took the inside and outside of the ball and plied it so that it was a little extra bit of yarn. Hmm. So again, something that was probably on there for years, you know, and I didn't remember that it was there. So I don't know what yeah. yarn, what fiber, anything about it. Bulky? This one, no, um, still kind of a DK sport weight. Okay. There's three, three strands there. So let's see. Yeah, this is a thicker strand that's in there. Mm -hmm. And then um, for ones that I did intentional for starting at Tour de Fleece, I got this one at um, Yarn Over. Ooh. And I don't remember the vendor. I have the little tag, but I am woefully unprepared. Um, these were all just sitting on my shelf and I pulled them out and and brought them. But yes, yeah, really pretty soft and squishy. Uh, barber one. pulling, really, yeah. Yeah, so it's just a two ply. Um, and it had, it was kind of like, what do I want to say, when it was prepared, it was just kind of dyed along the surface of the fleece. So when I was um, plying it, the, the colors got muted mm -hmm. into that white and blended. So it, it's a lot more pastel than it looked in the, in the uh, roving. Mm -hmm. But I like how it turned out. It's very pretty. So pretty. And what weight would you guess that is? It looks like you got a lot of it. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to say. Again, I I don't I haven't done the whips or or counted how many yards I got out of the ounces. But you know, I would probably do a sport pattern. Okay. So pretty. Yeah, it's it's truly giving me spin cycle vibes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then last but not least, I did a loop bump. So, um, or batch or whatever. If people aren't familiar with them, the roving is so well I don't want to say, prepared that it's uh, very thin and you don't have to do any sort of preparation. But if you spin it very thin, it, it can take you forever right forever to get through just mm -hmm. because it's so well prepared you can go super thin with it and some people do that and then like you could spend a month on that one bat just because of how yeah it's like lace weight but um or cobweb even but I decided to go ahead and try to make this as bulky as possible and so I've got a loop bat that basically I pulled from the outside. That's kind of a, a hint or trick that I've gotten from other people. Pulling from the inside, it tends to break because it's so mm, ethereal mm -hmm. um, and, and light. Pulling from the center kind of can break that. But if you pull from the outside, it just kind of, it goes better. Um, and so I just pulled from the outside, got to halfway through. You know, when I felt like it was halfway, I weighed it. And then went, oh, okay, here's where I need to break. And then I applied, then I went ahead and, and spun the second set and, and applied them together. So mm -hmm. we have something that's very barber poly or contrasty on both ends of the skein. So like, this is the start and then like, this is the end. Okay. And then the middle, kind of the colors were more blended or more closely matched. So you can, there's two sections and in this set, you know, if you were to knit it up, you would see a color change in here. And there's a couple color changes on either end. So I'd say about six, six color changes mm -hmm. if you were gonna knit one piece out of this. Yeah. And yeah, and then this one I would say is at least a worsted. I don't know if I'd go much higher than a worsted on this one. You so know, for pretty. patterns. Yeah. It's kind of like berry stained a little bit. Oh yeah, I can see that. Mm -hmm. But 
And then I went ahead and I put on a nitty gritty, um, or no, nitty and color, sorry. I don't think nitty gritty does fiber. Um, nitty and color, loved it. It's like, it's like a black with like the brightest pops of colors. And I thought that I would get kind of like a raven dye, you know, from Blue Moon Fiber Arts where it's kind of black, but then you see a sheen of something else. And there are spots like that, but she did such a good job of giving you full pops of color that it's also got like this huge bright pink and bright blue uh, as I'm spinning it. So I'm really enjoying that one. I can't wait to see what it's gonna ply up as. I've got one ply done and I'm halfway through the second set. And so, yeah, hopefully that'll be very soon. But yeah, yep. Tour de Fleece is off to a good start. Um, I've gotten two full skeins done plus uh, a third finished. So feels mm -hmm. well productive. Excellent, excellent. Well, I have all things stripes. I'm wearing stripes. I finished stripes. And then um, I think I mentioned last time that my, because we went into a little... <laughs> tangent about um needles and needle cables um that my needles that I used um to make my muscle beer muscle muscle burrows um a broke and so I had to I I took that as a sign that a I needed to order more because I had more hats that I wanted to make and then b that uh I should maybe do something different I was getting a little one note um so uh, I believe this was the one that I cast on when we were at the coffee shop together. And that one got, uh, got, uh, finished, um, probably between, um, when we were, I think we talked about, you probably saw it when we talked about whips pre ZK, uh, just absolutely love the screen. Um, mm -hmm. the other half of some self striping and another colorway that, so again, going to have a lot of a little, a, a little fraternal twinning. Like if you really looked at it, you would be able to see that this one was in another one and um, that obviously the self-striping was in another one, um, but really enjoyed how that self-striping worked up. Um, you can see more of the bullseye effect here on the, the top. So just a reminder, I'm doing the tops of solids. Once I get to the full circumference that I want is when I begin striping. And then at about the halfway point, I flip the, I flip the dominance, whether it's four um, rows of um, the one color or two of the, of the other. Uh, so this one, I believe I had finished up before ZK. And this was the one that a lot of people probably saw me working on at ZK. Um, this one I know is six and seven fiber left over from my, um, why can't I think of it? It's got the lace panels. You made one too um, by Sam Guerin. Petal party? Mm, yep. Turned mine into, yours is a crop. Yep. I turned mine into long sleeves. If the pattern and, says crop on it, I think. Yeah, petal party petal crop, party I crop. believe. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So leftovers, which I love, like the utilitarian in me is like, oh, that little, you know, um, most of a skein has been sitting around for some time. And here I get to um can you hear me? You're my it looks like maybe my connection's getting bad. I can. Okay. Um, but yeah. And then some leftover I can from hear you. Um, you're just well, I could hear you. Yeah, I stopped. And now I can't. You pros. Um <laughs> so again, I don't know which one is which. I'm gonna continue okay. on because I can see myself moving on the other screen. Maybe that's a sign that it's not me. <laughs> yep. And well, I um, can hear you just fine. Your video is jumpy. Okay. Okay. So I think it may be you. I think I'm, I may have diagnosed it as you, but, um, and then I made, uh, the Hohe, I was knitting it at, um, Rhinebeck, uh, the one with the pockets. Why can't I think of, I can't come up with the pattern names because all I can think of is Musil Burrows apparently. Um, <laughs> uh, that was leftover. So this is two sweaters leftover, blue tastic. Um, super, super love it. This is Sundara um, in there. Uh, it's not a single ply, but it's a very loosely plied base. And, um, yeah, kind of, kind of really enjoy the speckles and pops of color there. 
Uh, this was the one that I was working on primarily during ZK. Um, so if people saw me, that's this is how this one is has turned out. So it's that same blue that I had leftovers from my sweater. And then this was leftovers um, from Into the World uh, that I got at ZK or at Rhinebeck. And I made a sweater out of it too. So these are all leftover sweaters, which again, makes my, my heart happy um, that I was able to, I believe this was um, my... Uh, recalibrate. I knit the, primarily this um, white with the kind of pops of yellow into my recalibrate. Then I got out some new skeins of yarn and this is the one that literally broke the needle. <laughs> Couldn't handle it anymore. It was the pink. Uh, so this is, um, we just talked about her and we're like, oh, her watercolor stripes. Uh, I'm, I'm losing it. Diabolical. Diabolical. Uh, and I believe this pink is from Knit Picks. It's just some of their standard Knit Picks fingering weight base, but really enjoy how that one, again, the green is really popping on my screen here, but how that one knit up. Um, and then I took a break. I said it broke while I was doing the, uh, the crown. And so like right here ish. And I was like, Hey, I should probably do something else. If my needles are so exhausted from, they couldn't even, that they broke. Um, and so I did, I had seen so many lovely um, of the rocket tees at ZK. A lot of people were wearing them. Uh, I had kind of mentioned that it was needle adjacent pre-ZK, but hadn't gotten it on the needles. Uh, and so I used um, some D stash that I bought from Lavender Loon, um, the flying kettle. So she's not dying anymore. So that's the danger of waiting to knit something up because I was like, oh, I want to go get more of these beautiful, uh, this beautiful kind of rainbowy, speckled tastic. Does she have anything else? And then it, do it doesn't, it does not appear, at least I could not find that she is dying anymore. Uh, and then this was the purple um, that Eat Sleep Knit sent us in the, it's like Cicero from Malabrigo in one of our quarterly guessings. Um, so it's got some linen and um, so it's actually more of a sport weight. So my contrast stripe is actually heavier than my main main color, which is the opposite kind of, of how the pattern is written because they have you using lace weight as your kind of contrast stripe. So uh, I did a little bit of playing around towards the beginning, like so in this area of going like, so how many, because this is a little heavier weight base, how many stripes would make it look more even? Um, and so I think I ended up doing six of the uh, main color and no, eight of the main color and six of this purpley. Um, I just really love how it turned out. Uh, I, I had more of this yarn than I had of the other. I was really stretching on the purple, on the Malabrigo. Uh, so I made it as long as I wanted. And then I weighed how much I had left of the purple and got as many stripes as I could. And then I was like, oh, wow, these, these, uh, sleeves are going to be longer than I thought. <laughs> and then stopped. I still had a little bit of purple left. Um, but did use the main color as the I cord around, um, around the edging and looked at some notes on, um, Ravelry because she recommends using the mohair held double, I think for the I cords, uh, but saw some, so some modifications I made were, uh, I did, so Cindy on, on um, ZKN on Wednesday, uh, VKN mentioned, I was mentioning that I was having a lot of rolling, especially down at the bottom. And she mentioned doing a purl row um, before going into the I cord. So I ripped it out and redid that. I also had to go down significantly needle size. So like my main was on five and my I cords were on threes and they're still like, you know, they're not taut. They're very loosey goosey, um, but they did block out and, and lay pretty nicely. Um, the bottom, I believe I did a three stitch I cord. So that's three stitches on the needle. You do knit two and then you knit one through the back loop. Um, the neckline, somebody mentioned they thought that that was a bit heavy on the neckline. So I just did two stitches. So that's one stitch, 
one stitch and then do the next one through the back loop, which just causes this really nice, just one line of stitches there um, as an edging, which is, which is nice. It's a, a little lighter weight, probably closer to what you would have gotten if you'd use and used the mohair mm -hmm. as your I cord. Um, and then I think just to be different, I think I may have done in between those two for the sleeves. <laughs> well, and, oh. and yeah. I just don't remember there being sleeves. So, oh, you no, 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 yeah, you're right. So I think she just has you pick up or just have you take the stitches you set aside and put uh, and do the I cord on it. So I did add sleeves. You're right. So that was another modification that I just did on the fly and didn't even like internalize that I <laughs> changed. So yeah, super love it. Uh, would highly recommend and super modifiable, right? Like you could knit this whole thing in one color. Mm -hmm. um, you could do two fingering weights. You know, obviously I did, instead of having that be a more ephemeral thinner layer, I did the, the it was actually a thicker layer. Um, I've seen uh, Memphis Holly did hers with cotton fluff and it's much thicker um, in the area versus the mohair. Uh, but yeah, rocket tea. There's a reason why like 3000 people have made them <laughs> and why Debbie has made a billion of them. No, just three. I, I really have no room to talk. <laughs> right. Like how, how many hats? <laughs> and then I've got another one sitting in my lap. So <laughs> took some gray and the other half of that speckly, um, leftover sweater. Um, so yeah, I think I'm on, I have got another hat on the needles. Um, <laughs> cause it's, they're just so easy. I've got the pairing sitting there and I'm like, I got to finish this one. And then I grabbed the, another color to finish up the gray. Right. So it's, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and I bought that, that, um, the 50 50 from mm -hmm. um Mankato or Cato, sorry, Cato yarn. yarn. Yep. And I was like, I gotta make one. <laughs> so I'll probably be casting on and doing what you did with the stripes um here soon. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. I'm not gonna lie. I really, I'm really enjoying them. Um, I'm really enjoying the um the process of making them and then also that um the gifting, the gifting aspect for sure. Um, here, hopefully soon I will hit kind of like the, okay, now I will, there's always somebody to give a hat, but like the intended recipients list will have been <laughs> fulfilled and I should move on. I definitely am starting to get into a sweater, um, state of mind, you know, especially with the rocket tee. And then I think it's Penelope I looked at mm -hmm. recently, which is a really fun two color fingering weight um, top summer top. Um, I think it's Julie at work is her, um, is her Instagram. I'm, I'm really going to start going to stir the stash and try to find two fingering weight, um, you know, at least two, two fingering weight skeins of each color, I think is what I need. If I want it to have maybe a little bit more sleeve than she's written it up for. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, the, the, the false, the false sweater planning has begun in my head whether or not it actually starts hitting the needles anytime soon is another question. So, yeah, no, same for me. I gathered up my whips and there are four sweaters. <laughs> four You've got to start and, already. <laughs> and two socks. Um, yeah. So, and most of them are a lighter weight, um, but I do have one that's a little heavier weight that I'm kind of enjoying because of the zoom, zoom, you know, like, Mm -hmm. big yarn big needles let's go <laughs> and especially since this one with all the slip stitches feels like it's taking a lot longer mm -hmm. um, but I do have the front done and the back mostly done so I'm like oh with all so of that cool. spinning yeah look at you go yeah I'm, but it's that knitting monogamy other... crafting polygamy knitting monogamy mm -mm. okay <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Like I said, that, that other sweater, the big yarn, big needles, um, I think it's the Marley. Okay. Um, I had finished or I had started doing the sleeves at the same time. So one afternoon I picked those up and finished the sleeves. And now I'm like this far in the back. So I, I'm working on other stuff too. 
<laughs> Excellent. Well, stay tuned for, you'll get to see um, some, yeah, I feel like we got a, we had, we both had some tips and tricks in there and we've shown off a little bit of our whips. Um, so we, yeah. we snuck it in. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be chatting more in depth about those things going forward. And uh, yeah, always love the FO episode. So thanks for sharing. Yep. Bye. Bye, Ufta. <laughs>